I'm Jess, not Jesse, but close enough. And I'm also here to talk to you about a group of people ending up in a place where you might say, what the are they doing there? I'm very confused. Palestinians in Chile. Um, I'm actually not doing a project about refugees and people seeking refugee resettlement. It turns out the largest population of Palestinians living outside of the Arab world lives in Chile. They didn't come as refugees. They didn't come in the last 50 years. They didn't come after the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948. They actually came to Chile in the 1880s. And then another big wave of immigration came in the 1910s um, from the former Ottoman Empire fleeing military impressment. The Ottoman Empire was losing a lot of territory. It started uh, impressing young men into the army and its territories of what's now Syria and Lebanon um, and Palestine. And an upper middle class kind of merchant class of young men said, no freaking way am I serving in the Ottoman army to defend against these imperial interests. Um, let's check out Latin America. I hear there's some great economic opportunities down there. The weather seems great. Um, and there's some other historical reasons why Palestinians ended up in Chile. Although I guess I'll say as well, there's big um, Syrian and Lebanese populations in Brazil, uh, in Bolivia, and Argentina. Uh, but the Palestinians ended up crossing the Andes and making their way to Chile in rather, um, again, I think surprising fashion. And they've spent about the last, let's call it 150, 125 years, um, becoming among one of the most successful immigrant populations in Chile. Um, they've achieved a ton of economic prowess political power and uh, high amounts of visibility. And so what my project is about, um, well, I mean, I have a piece of paper, I can do this to you, but uh, it's about the ways that Palestinian politics, as well as Palestinian citizens of Chile themselves, are navigating the political world of domestic Chilean politics. So it turns out this, pol this Palestinian population has a really unique and sort of complicated relationship to the dictadura. Um, many of them who make their fortunes in things like mining, textile industries, and gain quite a lot of economic success were hampered by Allende's uh, reforms and ended up being strong supporters of the dictatorship. So that we think of the Palestinian movement as sort of being a bastion of the worldwide left. It turns out actually here, many of the elected officials and many of the political persuasions of the Palestinian Chilean community are quite far to the right. What we see now, in addition to during the resistance to the dictatorship, Again, sort of paradoxically, is that a lot of um, revolutionary and um, counter dictatorship groups like the Mir and other people were taking up the iconography of Palestinian resistance as a form of solidarity and as a form of sort of bringing together the international left. Um, so there are all these sort of contradictions within the Palestinian Chilean community. Um, the historically unique nature, the fact that they're in Chile, the fact that they didn't come as refugees, 99% uh, of them are Christian. Um, they come from three places in the West Bank, Bethlehem, Beit Jahur, and Beit Salah. Um, that unique historical nature interests me as a historian. We love finding stuff that people, again, are like, what are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, but actually, what I'm really interested in in this project is uh, ways that the themes of Palestinian solidarity of Palestinian iconography and also of memory and narrative and diaspora are coming up in contemporary Chilean politics. So um, I'm actually, there, there are some historical studies of this population and when it got here, kind of the first, uh, in the 20th century, I'm really more interested in the dictatorship and in contemporary um, political organizing. Um, this photo on the left is from the neighborhood Patronato, which I was mentioning to you. It's in the center, if any of you have been to the Mega Central, Central Market. Um, Patronato now is uh, still remains a pretty immigrant heavy neighborhood, a lot of Chinese and Haitian folks living there, but it was once the center of Palestinian uh, kind of settlement in Santiago. Um, you still see a lot of um, Arab bakeries, a lot of shawarma, and a lot of places you'll go and walking around have Palestinian flags. So this is a photo I took when I was here doing some research a few years ago. Um, this is a sign all the way on the right at Universidad de Chile, Juan Gómez Mías. Um, my friends and other scholars who are interested in sort of the historical legacy of protests and political movements um, have talked a lot about how sort of the left and especially the Chilean left invokes other international movements against uh, repression or colonialism. But I became really fascinated in ways that the iconography of Palestinian protests in particular 
ends up being r a rather global phenomenon, but also gets applied really specifically to the Chilean context as a way of invoking something maybe against the dictatorship, maybe against, uh, when I was here, there was a lot of protests against the Nuevo Ley Estatal, so um, about funding public education. Um, so there's really interesting ways that sort of the legacy of solidarity with Palestinian causes showing up on Chilean university campuses. Um, and then there also is a big legacy of Palestinian Chilean community members writing a lot about their own experiences under dictatorship, under going through a political awakening of sorts, and also um, having relationships with Palestine. So this is a really famous Chilean author named Lina Miruane. She goes through this process of um, wanting to reconnect with her Palestinian roots, goes back to the West Bank, and has a really um, powerful experience, writes this book called Volverse Palestina, so hopefully people who speak Spanish are getting a little bit about not only like returning to a land, but returning herself and returning, um, yeah, whatever you speak Spanish. So um, <laughs> it's a really fascinating book, and what she does, and this kind of sparked my interest when I was doing research here last time, is talk a lot about the similarities between what she experienced in terms of Chilean politics of repression under the dictatorship and Israeli policies of occupation. Um, and she really stridently ar argues and leaves this experience of this book, I think, asking us to see basically um, Palestinian experience and Chilean experience under dictatorship as analogous, if not basically the same. So I'm really interested in the comparisons that people are making. Um, I'm not actually here to evaluate whether that's true or not, but I think it's uh, always powerful and complicated, not just to understand the way people are making narrative about their own experiences of trauma, but also to understand how that historical narrative is informing the way they see their contemporary politics. So um, what I'm interested in in particular is the fact that this community is really um, big, it's really powerful, it has a lot of institutions, um, so philanthropic institutions, a lot of, again, elected officials, as I mentioned, uh, there's country clubs, there's a lot of cultural programming that goes on, um, as well as these student groups that are actually mostly taking place on college campuses to encourage education and solidarity with Palestinian cause. Um, I'm trying to understand how people under understand whether they're Palestinian or not, the relationship between Palestinian politics and Chilean history and politics. And I'm also really curious in ways that um, diaspora communities in general of immigrants, especially ones that are not coming as refugees, but experience relative amounts of economic and political privilege, make sense of living in a new place, and then also maintaining cultural connections, historical connections, and political connections with the place that they came. Um, I think that this is really fascinating because um, actually the place I'm affiliated with, the Centro de Estudios Árabes, was formed because a group of Palestinian Chilean women um, gathered money in the 1950s and said we actually really should have a place to study Arab studies in Chile um, and they went on a fundraising vendor and made it happen so actually the legacy of a lot of uh, academia in this country not just about Palestinians but about the Arab world in general comes from the Palestinian Chilean community um, things like these books and uh, magazines from the community and other kinds of publications are sort of mentioned in a lot of historical scholarship but whenever I would tell people that I was about to head to Chile to study Palestinians again I think like the popular knowledge of this is sort of well, what do you mean they're Palestinians in Chile as well as the academic knowledge which tends to be situated a little bit more in terms of sociology there's some interesting scholarship about where Palestinians have moved after they left Patronato and then a little bit about when they came but not so much having to do with more contemporary political issues. Um, and I think that this is a really controversial issue. Anytime that I would tell people that I was studying something having to do with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I sort of watch their shoulders go like this. Um, I think that we exist, uh, at least in the US, in an academic context that tends to be rather risk averse in talking about Israel-Palestine, as well as sort of the general conversation in the US tends to be rather skittish of even saying the word Palestine. So while my objective isn't to come here and push people's buttons, although I'm sure that will inevitably happen, my job is, as a historian is to talk about things that uh, are relevant and interesting to people's lives, but also that um, are often sort of swept under, I think, for reasons of discomfort or perhaps of lack of knowledge, which is all to say, I think that 
the ways that this community of Palestinians in Chile is navigating questions that are globally important, like the two-state solution, like ways that the U.S. political orientation towards Israel and Palestine is changing. I think that those are really interesting and relevant, but they don't get a lot of airtime. We don't tend to think about Latin America as being particularly relevant when it comes to the Middle East, let alone to Israel and Palestine. But the fact is that this community of Palestinians here has an incredible amount of power, um, both in Chilean politics and in terms of leverage. They're pretty much the most assimilated, economically and politically connected group of Palestinians living outside of the immediate areas of Palestine and Lebanon and Syria and Jordan. Um, and uh, I think for that reason, they deserve a little bit more of our attention. Um, so I can talk a little bit about methodology, I guess, in questions, but I'll wrap up by saying, like, I'm really, so I started doing a project on, mostly on Chilean university campuses and how students were understanding this Palestinian community and also Palestinian solidarity work. Um, when I was here a few years ago, I got to go to something called Takali. Uh, the Palestinian community here in 2017 organized the first conference of diaspora Palestinians living in Latin America to come to this fancy country club in Las Condes called Club Palestino, and they were selling treats, and they were charlas, and there were movies, and so it was a really fascinating uh, encuentro. There are lots of different Palestinian communities in Latin America, so I'm looking forward to kind of checking out other um, ways that Palestinians here in Chile are serving as a hub for other Palestinian diaspora groups in Latin America and in general to gather and talk about this experience of diaspora that's pretty specific. Um, and uh, there are a lot of interesting ways that Palestinians have actually really integrated into Chilean culture, not least of which is the football team Palestino. And um, if you go to any marchas, uh, you may see some Palestinian flags. So I guess my questions are also, they're historical in nature, but they're also really interested in ways that people are invoking this history, um, this legacy of immigration and diaspora, in order to understand their own political orientations, not least of which will be affected by this idea of social. Um, and sort of the ways that Ch the Chilean government has often played an interesting role in meeting with and having economic and political relations with both the government of Israel and of Palestine.